welcome to Life at Home. This is season two, a series dealing with family matters, a family ministries series that is dealing with family issues affecting your home and mine. I'm your host and presenter, Dr. Eugene Franch, and we want to look at in this series what it takes in the area of two cru crucial things, the area of love in the home, the area of relationships in the home, for we are creatures of relationships, and especially when it comes to the home where love prevails. I want to share with you the concepts of God's Word, turning you back to the Bible, helping you to find those principles, and strengthening your home, strengthening your marriage. Today, our presentation is entitled Seasons of a Marriage. It's an interesting area, but first, let me give you a beautiful family gem, a marriage gem that you can take with you throughout the day. Marriage has be less beauty, but more safety than the single life. It is full of sorrows and full of joys. It lies under more burdens, but is supported by more love. And those burdens are delightful. Seasons of a marriage. This quotation we've just read helps us to understand how delightful marriage is. It is full of joys, but it is also full of burdens as well. It is full of sorrows and full of joys. It lies under more burdens, but supported by more love. And that's what marriage is all about. It is not constant. As many people think, marriage is a state that we get into where joy and love will constantly flourish but that's not true, for true marriage has both joys, has both sorrows, but they are delightful because the couple understands their relationship when it comes to love and looking after each other. The seasons of marriage, if I can say, is that there are four marriages within the marriage. This might sound kind of strange, but when we look at the whole marriage relationship from the time the couple gets married to the time they die, that marriage goes through four ultimate seasons, if we can call it. When we look at the world today and look at our climate, even the world today and our climate and this earth has four unique seasons. These seasons are necessary for the earth to flourish for the earth to produce and bring out its best. And so it is also in a marriage relationship. For even in the earth, we have summer, we have autumn, we have winter, and we have spring. And so I want to look at today the four unique uh, seasons of a marriage. Just like the earth has four seasons, your marriage will go through four unique seasons. But before we get into them, I want to ask you this question. When you look at marriage, how do you consider it? Marriage is intimacy. Marriage is a mystical bond of friendship. Marriage, if you can think about it, is a commitment to understand and love one another. And that's hard to explain and even defies explanation of how you can do that constantly. But I want to say to you out there, to the couples experiencing their first few years as husband and wives, let me ask you these tough questions. When the story of your life is finally written, what will the record show? Will you cultivate an intimate marriage throughout the relationship? Or will you journey relentlessly down the road when troubles occur towards the divorce courts and proceedings with consequent property settlements, custody battles, if you can call it, and even broken dreams? I ask you the question, how will you beat the odds when the crisis comes? How will you build a relationship that will last until death? The good news is, is that you can enjoy a home where love prevails. You can experience a love for a lifetime, the way that God intended it to be. And there's no better time than now. For this series here helps us to go back to God's Word. It helps us to look at the biblical principles and take them into our marriages, into our families. And in that way, we can beat the odds and have a joyful marriage. Four 
marriages within a marriage. How is that possible? Let me share with you that a good marriage, that a marriage that happens often, goes through four unique seasons of marriage. One writer entitled Dr. D. H. Lawrence wrote a book entitled, We Need One Another. Listen up to what he says. He says, I should say the relation between any two decently married people changes profoundly every two years, often without their knowing anything about it. Though every change causes pain, even if it brings a certain joy, the long course of the marriage is a long event of perpetual change. It is like rivers flowing on through new country and unknown. When you think about that, Dr. Lawrence is true. Though you may not realize it in your marriage, your marriage will change profoundly after so many years. And many couples don't even realize that they are changing and experiencing a new marriage within a marriage. So what are these four seasons of marriage? Well, let me just give them to you quickly and we can look at them uh, in detail. The four seasons of a marriage is, number one, you have the dream marriage. Then the marriage goes to the second level known as the disillusion and marriage. And then it moves on to the discovery marriage. And finally, it reaches a state called the depth marriage. Four marriages within the marriage. Yes, it is true. Well, let's look at them carefully. As we come to the first stages of every marriage, it is called the dream marriage. When a couple comes to the altar and when they get married, no doubt they've never experienced the love relationship. No doubt they haven't even been in the marriage experience for very long. In their mind is a dream, a dream of what it would be like, a dream to know that things are good and things will be bliss. So they think, well, during the early years, couples, yes, will have a very high expectation of what marriage incurs. It is this motivation of being newly married that seems to push away the negative things of life in a marriage. The feelings that they express, they are cautious. When one has done them wrong during the dream stage, they are not quick to criticize, but rather they say, okay, okay, this is, uh, maybe this will go away. They quick to just put it aside and always think that things will get better. The dream marriage is a state where each couple will tolerate each other's behaviors, each other's experiences, the words, the characters. It's a stage where they begin to tolerate it because they're getting to know the person. And what helps them to tolerate it and not lash out is this one fundamental thing. They just love each other. they madly in love in a physical way. And that love seems to overshadow the negative things in a marriage. They avoid any kind of tolerance. And also they overlook the differences that could be serious. But because of newlyweds, they begin to say, no, marriage should be happy. Let me overlook it. The dream is largely an illusion. And couples will recognize soon what love really means in a marriage. This is the first stage of marriage. It takes a few years for couples to get in it, but they will not stay in that level of marriage forever. For this first phase of marriage, the dream stage is a happy stage. It's an exciting stage. It is two trying to become one. It is two different individuals trying to merge together as one. And what happens? They overlook many things that need to be looked at because they are in love, the dream marriage. It's a beautiful stage, but then this marriage needs to move on to the next stage. And the next stage of marriage is the disillusionment marriage. It may sound bad or it may sound negative. And in a way it is, but you are being more real in the marriage. What happens at this stage? The disillusionment stage, when, when disillusionment strikes, we find that couples now begin to try to manipulate each other. They feel that they cannot keep quiet. They feel they've got to now just speak out and let their partner know, this I don't like. 
and they begin now to criticize. They begin to lash out. The tone of voice begins to change. It is not said in a loving way. And so the marriage begins to enter into the disillusionment stage. The two try to eliminate differences by attempting to change their partner and how true it is. For in marriage, we think that my way is the right way. And so during the stage, each partner is jostling with each other, trying to change their behavior, their actions, the way they do things so that they are happy. And so they become discouraged. They look at their marriage after a few years and say, is this what marriage is all about? With so many errors in my partner, with so many errors in the way the home is run. Yes, every marriage goes through the disillusionment stage. It's a stage that is necessary for the marriage relationship to grow eventually. And many couples at this stage think that their marriage is in trouble. Many couples think at this stage that they've lost that first love. They've lost the passion that brought them together, and that is not true. If they would understand that all marriages go through this stage called the disillusionment stage, relationships in this stage are often competitive. And so both husband and wife now are competing with each other. And not as such as with as a united front, but against each other to prove that their way is the right way. And so competition is there and adverse effects is there. The hopes begin to fade in the marriage. And one couple or even both couples begin to realize that something's wrong. The rosiness of the marriage is gone. The, the joy and the flame of passion sometimes may not be there because of the many conflicts that they now speaking out of. Many go looking for the dream stage again. And this is where it's dangerous. Many marriages go through a breakup, go through a divorce during this stage. It ought not to be. If couples would only know this is natural, they need to hang in there. They need to realize that this is part of an ideal marriage under God's government. And so the disillusioned marriage is a period too where maybe some partners get divorced and want to go back and get into a dream marriage again. But that too will not last. For after the dream marriage very soon will come the disillusionment stage of marriage. And when couples hang in there, when couples realize that this will not last forever, they will have the confidence and they'll have the hope to look to the next stage. And the next stage of marriage from the disillusioned marriage stage is the discovery stage. This is a positive stage. This is a stage uh, of, of, of changing where the marriage now is beginning to change for the betterment, where the marriage now is beginning to actually be united and get more stable in the couple's relationship. What is the discovery marriage? Well, this phase, we find couples begin to discover each other and begin to accept that we are different. They begin to discover that this is how you view things and this is how I view things. It's okay. We can still live under the same roof. We can still find joy even though it is done differently. This is the discovery stage. Couples fail to understand this. They see marriage and they see love. They see happiness only in, at the, in their point of view without realizing, I'm a woman, I'm a man, I see the world differently. But when each couple are willing now to discover, how does the, my spouse see this aspect of the marriage and begin to accept it, that begin to unite together, this will begin to grow the marriage. They learn how to fight more fairly. They learn now how to give in. They learn now to realize that fight is not a fight to always win. But it's a fight in order to have a compromise where both walk away from the table, knowing that, yes, I too need to learn something from this situation that has not gone well. During this stage, the stage of the discovery marriage, there is balance in the relationship between the individuals. They are giving more time to each other to become separate, to become a unique individual. And this is something that this 
level of the marriage, the stage of the marriage is important. Giving time for my partner to live in the marriage, yes, as an individual, a single individual yet married, and how important it is. Sometimes we want to change our partner to behave as I behave, to feel as I feel, to have the same joy as I have the joy without realizing we are different. We are man, we are woman. But during the discovery stage, you begin to accept, you begin to evaluate, you begin now to say that, yes, when negative things affect the marriage, we can still work through it. Let's look at it together and see how we can get a good compromise out of it. The discovery marriage is a marriage where both partners are still looking towards bonding stronger together than ever. They begin to realize that they are not perfect. Even though they may feel their way is the right way, they begin to see flaws in their lifestyle that they've never seen before. The discovery marriage stage is a beautiful, exciting stage. We are not in competition anymore, but you are moving forward to the area of cooperation in a marriage. And then from the discovery marriage, a couple will finally move to the last stage. And that last stage is the stage called the depth marriage. This is a unique stage. This is the stage that God would want every married couple, every family to reach. The depth stage where they are following the principles of God's word. Where they are recognizing that there is a place for forgiveness. Where they begin to look at each other not as perfect creatures, but as imperfect ones. And what brings them together is love. Love for each other in order to experience the depth. And what the depth stage brings contentment. Yes, my husband is like that. Yes, my wife is like that. But you know what? I still love her. There's some uniqueness about her that makes her so sweet. And you begin now to accept each other and grow more heavenward, fulfilling the principles and the laws that God has given in this book called the Bible. The depth marriage is a place where we can sit genuinely and listen to each other. Even though you may not agree with what they say, you're not there to fight. This is one individual with their understanding of the world. Let me try and just come a bit into their world to see why they think that way. And so the depth level is a level where I will not criticize a lot, but have more understanding. I will not speak so often, but I will listen more before I speak. In order to understand where is my spouse coming from, why are they suddenly beginning to think in this way, to do the things they do, this is the depth marriage, a time when the two are united. This is a time where intimacy becomes whole. Emotions begin now to be looked upon and support with each other. And even in the intellectual discussions of communication, they begin to value each other's ideas, value each other's opinions, because they are in this stage, the depth stage. I still love my partner. I still trust my partner. I still understand that he or she will be back soon, and we can continue the marriage relationship. At this stage, both couples have this idea. The future is beautiful. The future is great. The future with the two of us is so wholesome as we begin to live our marriage following God's principles. And so there you have it, the four stages of a marriage, a marriage that has four marriages within it. What is it? The dream marriage. Yeah, newlyweds may happen for one, two, three, five years even, but it won't stay like that forever. For the dream marriage will soon filter into the next stage, the disillusionment stage of marriage. And during this fact is so crucial. If only couples were instructed about the stage, they wouldn't be so quick to go to the divorce courts. 
The disillusioned stage is now a stage of testing, of trying one character, of trying one knowledge, of the principles you are now bringing into the marriage to follow. May your principles, may your values come from the word of God. For God's word has much to say about how we can keep our marriages strong and healthy, even in this stage, the disillusionment stage, and then we come to the discovery stage. Finally, discovering one another. Again, as unique individuals, he's not perfect, she's not perfect, but I still love them in their weakness because I know we can work together. And finally, the depth marriage. A stage here where the levels of maturity are coming together and couples now are content and understand because of the knowledge of what they've been through, they now are content to stay at this level until death do us part. With this year, I want to say that when you understand the four marriages within a marriage, there are some questions that every couple needs to ask themselves. Let us do just a quick uh, reflection upon these four stages of marriage. And here are some, e some keen questions that every couple needs to ask. Number one, in which of these marriages do you find yourself right now? That's an important question. Out of the four stages, every couple needs to know what stage am I? Are we in? Are we at the first stage, the dream stage, or the second stage, the disillusionment stage, or the third stage, the stage of the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the depth marriage, discovery marriage. This is important. When you know what stage you're in, you're now more likely to look out for the pitfalls. The couples are more likely to realize that their marriage is not in trouble. It's a stage where these things happen constantly. It's a stage where, yes, it will happen. Hang in there. It won't be forever. And so <clears throat> this question is important. In which stage do you find your marriage at this time? Look at it. Look at what happens at this stage. Acknowledge it and look out for it and support each other during that stage. Another question that couples need to ask each other is, what is hopeful in understanding these stages? And when I say hopeful, couples need to realize that the first three stages are stages where they can now move to the final stage. They need to have hope and not despair. They need to be encouraged to know this shall not last forever. <clears throat> For in the stage, we are there, but it will move on to a far better life. What is hopeful in understanding the stage you are at? This only comes from understanding the stage and what goes with it. And then another question would be, what would facilitate your growth into the next marriage? For couples need to move finally from one stage to the other until they reach the fourth stage. And the question is, what would facilitate, what would help the couple to move as quickly as possible, maturely as possible into the next stage until they reach the depth stage of marriage? And so both husband and wife need to sit down and need to look at their marriage at the present time and ask themselves, what do we need to do? What steps do we need to do to move from the stage so that we begin to move to the third and fourth stage, the stage of discovery, the stage of contentment, the stage of peace, and not conflict, the stage of the depth marriage where you're content now to what the marriage is giving you. And then the last question that couples need to ask themselves, how can you work to put your ideas in place? in the church, to benefit both yourselves and others. When you think about this, what can a couple do to help the church, help couples go through these stages in a healthy way? These are questions that can only betterment your marriage. And so in closing, these stages may sound so terrible, but it is part of marriage. I want to share with you something called encouragement. As you go through these stages, we need to learn to encourage each other. Husbands and wives need to learn to encourage each other during the negative parts of these stages. What is it? Well, let me share with you. Encouragement is 
instilling hope in each other, to tell each other there's still hope. Encouragement is giving practical help. When you know your spouse needs encouragement, not only to talk, but to do some action to actually give practical help. Encouragement is showing confidence and trust. When your spouse is nervous, when your spouse doesn't feel safe, it is at that time that you give encouragement in the, in the form of showing confidence in what they are doing, in showing trust in what they are doing. There's another one. Encouragement is offering forgiveness and another chance. I like that. The aspect of forgiveness. Every marriage needs forgiveness. Every stage, every uh, uh, part of marriage, the four parts, needs this element of forgiveness. Offering forgiveness is another chance to ex experience encouragement. Another one is being a friend. Another one is ac accepting the person unconditionally. I know you're not perfect, but I love you and I will accept you unconditionally with your strengths and especially with your weaknesses because I know they can be eradicated, they can be helped, so I accept you wholly. Expressing love. There's no greater way than encouraging one spouse just to show some love in action. And then separating the deed from the doer. This is one time too when conflict occurs. We begin to harper so much on the person, but it's a habit. Speak bad about the habit, but not of the person. For everyone can kick a bad habit if they put their mind to it. So encouragement is separating the act, the deed from the doer, who it is. Speak on the deed of what's done and try and help them. And then eye contact when you speak, when there's problems. Look in person into that. Let them know you care. I love you. That's why I'm talking to you. Eye contact is important. Sparing embarrassment is also a good one. And apologizing when you're wrong. Honey, I'm sorry. Honey, forgive me. These are words of encouragement. Ways of encouraging your spouse in the Lord. And so, as you go forth from here, no matter what stage you are in your marriage, whether it's the dream stage, whether it's the disillusionment stage, discovery or depth stage, understand this, God is there to help you. And God says, hang in there. I'm with you all the way. God bless you in your marriages. Thank you.